All right, welcome back to VSL Aviation. I'm Seth Lake, and this is episode two of our engine series. In episode one, we talked about the crankshaft and the camshaft. Here in episode two, we're gonna talk all about the case and how it works, because the case is actually a critical component of the engine. So typically pilots think of the case as the engine because it's a very visible part of the engine. We'll look at that at the last episode of the series where it looks like on the plane. But if you do a pre-flight on a plane, what you're seeing is the actual case from the outside. Uh, so this top portion here should kind of be familiar looking. If you've ever flown a Cessna 172, this is a really common engine you find in the 172. Uh, and that's probably part of the component you can actually see through the uh, cooling holes up in the front of the engine. Uh, however, the case is just a component of the engine. It's not the engine itself. We're gonna focus in on what's inside of this case. What does it do? Now, from episode one, we already talked about this is the locations that the main bearings would be located. That's where your crankshaft spins. So that's one of the things that it does is it provides a surface for the crank to spin on and it holds the crank in place. It also has three locations where the camshaft is and that's of course where the camshaft spins. Now what I want to look at in more detail are these actual holes in the case. So you can see that there's several places in the engine where you see tiny little holes that are milled into this case. So this case first of all is made out of cast aluminum. It's a lot lighter in fact than the crank. Each of these case halves are about 10 pounds lighter than the crank as a whole. So the two cases together weigh about 50 pounds and remember our crank weighs around 35 pounds. So you can tell that the crank is a lot smaller in size but it's a lot heavier. That's because the crank is made out of steel and our case is made out of aluminum. Now that's unlike most of your car engines out there. If you're Driving a car around uh, that was built fairly recently, it's probably a, uh, a cast sort of uh, steel or iron uh, case and not an aluminum. Uh, it's not that aluminum is stronger, it's that aluminum is a lot lighter and we're worried about weight with aircraft engines. So it's made out of cast aluminum. Now in the casting process, the case is built with what are called oil journals. So these oil journals, you can't actually see unless we were to water jet this case in half. You can probably find some pictures on Google that shows you what internal oil journals look like. But you can see that these holes actually line up with places in the case where we have pressurized oil running through. So these oil journals get pressurized oil from the oil pump. And our oil pump is integral to our engine. We don't have like an external oil pump. What I mean by that is it sits on the back of the engine. Uh, we're going to talk about the accessories here in just a moment, but you can see there's a kind of an entry point uh, here on the case halves. That's where the oil journals connect. And back here on the accessory case, we have a hole where <clears throat> an oil line would be connected to that's forcing pressurized oil into this oil journal system. So oil is continually flowing through uh, kind of the vascular system, if you will, of this engine case. Now, the oils, the oil itself of this engine, this is a wet sump oil system. So this is our actual oil sump right here. In fact, we got a little bit of oil left over from when we took this engine apart. So uh, we typically run this engine with seven quarts of oil. So as we dump all the oil in, it collects at the bottom of the engine into this oil sump here. So our oil sump has a cleaning screen right here. This is safety wired shut. That's where we would pull the screen out during um, annual inspections and check for any debris. And then at the bottom, we have a quick drain valve right here. This is what we would drain to change the oil every 50 hours or so. So our oil is sitting down here collecting. Now you notice that this oil sump could only hold um, around two to three quarts of oil. So the oil pickup isn't actually down here. The oil pickup is at the bottom of our engine where our oil pump is located. So our oil pump would be located somewhere down here at the bottom of our engine. 
it's really hard to, to show it when the engine split apart like this. And it would pick up oil out of the oil sump. And our oil sump, you can see, sits right here. So imagine these two cases go together. The oil sump would sit at the bottom. So about half of our engine, or the, the lower part of our engine, would actually be submerged in oil. So a lot of the uh, lubrication that takes place in the engine actually happens when this crank splashes down through a kind of a vat of oil. So the oil's just down there getting splashed around as the crank flies around. So it's a real messy situation inside of this crank when the engine's running. Uh, I think a lot of pilots imagine there's like all the oil is being delivered to the engine through these pressurized vessels. And that's true in some cases, but a lot of the oil is just splashed around on the inside of the crank, uh, for lack of a better term. So that's why if you allow the oil to get down below its minimum, that splashing stops happening. That lubrication that that splashing causes stops happening and you can cause damage to the engine. So the oil sump sits at the bottom of the case. So we have uh, really kind of four parts to the, the case itself. We have the two case halves. These are basically identical and just split right down the middle. The other thing we have is the oil sump right here. And then the last part of our case that's really important is our accessory case. So this fits at the very back of the engine. So you can see right there is our oil pump. So our oil pump feeds pressurized oil up into our oil filter. This is where our oil filter would be located. And then these two valves right here would go to our oil cooler because we want to keep our oil cool. So we're going to send that to the front of the engine. Uh, so it would be this way. We would send this up to the front of the engine into uh, a heat exchanger that we'll look at on the last episode. So that's kind of our whole oil system. It starts at the accessory case. It moves into the case as pressurized oil. That pressurized oil just drains into the oil pan where it's picked up by the oil pump and the cycle starts over again. So, so that's kind of the oil life of our case. So our case's primary job is to hold the crank and camshaft in place. The primary part two job of it is to lubricate all of these moving parts because the case has to hold dissimilar metals together, right? It's got aluminum, it's got steel, it's got other types of, you know, copper and all this. It's holding that all together. It has to lubricate them really well to make sure they don't fatigue um, prematurely. Uh, and then it moves that oil down to this uh, oil sump. And this oil sump sits at the bottom of our engine, so it's away from most of the heat. Now it does get hot for sure, but that allows it to cool a little bit. Uh, in the front of the engine, or sorry, in the back of the engine, we also have our uh, vernotherm. Now the vernotherm is a type of uh, thermostat. It's kind of a thermostat you see in your car. Uh, this thermostat detects uh, the temperature of the oil, and it doesn't do that through an electric process. It's actually a type of metal that expands and contracts the, the different amount of heat you put into it. So as the vernotherm heats up, it actually closes off and it causes that oil to travel to the oil cooler and back into the engine. So as it goes back into the engine, goes into the oil sump. Now these tubes right here, you may be wondering what these are. This is actually the first stop the air in our engine makes from the carburetor. So the carburetor would sit at the very bottom of this oil sump. It would feed clean, air, or not clean air, but air that's been mixed with fuel into this uh, intake manifold. And these four lines would go to our four uh, air intakes for each of our cylinders, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. So the case we talked about, the case halves, the oil sump, and the accessory case. You're going to see how these interact with the cylinders. And then finally, in the la last episode, We'll talk about how that looks on an actual engine. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.